Okay, now that we've talked about different kinds of questions, let's uh, formulate a good clinical question. And we're going to use what's called the PICO method. And this mnemonic stands for P for patient or problem. I is for intervention. C is for the comparison to which you're going to compare the intervention. And finally, O is for outcome. So let's look at these in a little bit more detail. So P for patient or problem is you take the patient that you've seen and try and get some of the most important characteristics of that patient, or like their comorbidities, sex, age, race. Um, and so it might be best to explain this in the light of an example. So let's say you're working and you have a 28-year-old male who has uh, diabetes who presents with an abscess that required incision and drainage. And you're wondering if antibiotics should be prescribed. So your P, your patient here, is this 28-year-old guy. But it's more than just a 28-year-old guy. It's a 28-year-old man with diabetes uh, and an abscess. So all these other important factors uh, are, they're, well, they're important because they are going to impact upon uh, the question that we ask. The next thing we're going to look at is the intervention. So remember we were asking about uh, whether or not we wanted to give antibiotics to this patient. And so that would be our intervention. And the comparison or control group to that would be to not give antibiotics. And finally is outcome. And that's something you should determine at the, at the beginning prior to your search. So this could be, in this particular case, time to resolution of abscess. So your question would be, do antibiotics make it improve faster? Do the abscesses heal faster? You may ask instead... Uh, do antibiotics prevent recurrences of abscesses? Or do antibiotics uh, prevent the need for hospitalization? So there's lots of different outcomes you could look at. So you pick your question and you pick the outcome that you're going to look at. So let's say in this one we're deciding whether it's to be time to resolution of the abscess. So this would be what if we had a question of therapy with our therapy being antibiotics. And now if you were to phrase this into... Uh, question, you would say something like, in diabetic patients with recurrent abscesses, do antibiotics compared to no antibiotics improve the rate of healing? So let's try another one, this time uh, one with a question of harm. So let's say you're in the emergency room and you're working and you have a mom who brings in her three-month-old otherwise healthy girl who rolled off the changing table and hit the hardwood floor. The kid looked fine, was was acting normally, not vomiting, but the very worried and guilty feeling mom asks you, uh, you know, does my kid need a CT and are there any risks of the CT? So then you, you ask yourself, I don't know, well, what are the risks of CT? Is there a risk of cancer? And so this is a question of harm. Is a CT harmful to this kid? So let's ask this question now in the PICO format. So P would be our patient, and our patient population we're looking at here are healthy infants with falls from low height. Our intervention, in this case, it's really not an intervention, it's the, the exposure that we're considering, and the exposure here is radiation, and namely radiation from the CT scan. And obviously the comparison would be uh, not getting a CT scan. And the outcome would be the development of cancer at some point in the child's life. So if we were to formulate this into a question now using our PICO uh, pieces here, you might ask, in healthy infants, what is the risk of cancer after getting a CT of the head compared to not getting a CT of the head? And let's try one more. This time we'll try one with a question of diagnosis. So let's say we're seeing a 27-year-old otherwise healthy woman who happens to be pregnant in which you are considering a PE. And your question is, is a D-dimer useful in pregnant patients, or is it going to be high just because of the pregnancy, or will that help me with diagnosis uh, of pulmonary amylus in pregnant patients? So, P, our patient population, and this is going to be healthy pregnant females. Our I intervention really is a test that we're going to use, and that would be the D-dimer. And then the C comparison would be some sort of gold standard that we're looking at. How are we going to determine whether or not these patients have had a PE or not? And so some potential options might be you could compare it to getting CAT scans on these people or getting a VQ scan. 
But let's say we're going to try to minimize radiation and we're going to use a uh, 30-day follow-up and say that at, at least after 30 days they had not developed any uh, pulmonary embolus or death. And in fact, that would probably also qualify as your outcome measure because that's what you're looking for as the outcome is whether they have developed a PE or, or death. And since that's what we're looking for, that is our outcome. So that would be a question of diagnosis. So if you were to formulate this into a proper question, you could say, in healthy pregnant females, how good is D-dimer at diagnosing pulmonary embolus as uh, diagnosed uh, either by report of PE or death within 30 days? Now, armed with these questions, we can actually go to the literature and try and find some articles that would answer these. Okay, now that we've formulated a clinical question, let's go find some some articles or evidence. And where can we find them? There are lots of different places you could look. There are various different summaries that we have available, such as Up to Date, which we have at Rush, or Dynamed, which we're going to start using, even eMedicine, which a lot of people are familiar with. There are other databases, such as the Cochrane Library. Uh, there are electronic textbooks, such as Access Medicine and MD Consult. But the one that we're going to focus on here is doing Medline searches through PubMed. Now, I never know how to get to PubMed, so I always have to go to it through Google. So let's do that in the Google search box. We'll try PubMed, and we get these links here. The first one, Home PubMed, is the one that we're looking for. And then here's the PubMed homepage. And then up here at the top, we can enter our search. And so let's use the one we talked about before, which was pregnancy and D-dimer. And if we hit Enter, we get our search results. And we can see there's a bunch of them over here. Now let's look at a couple of things on this page. The first thing I wanted to look at are these search details over here. So when you type in pregnancy and D-dimer, PubMed is not really looking at those words. It translates it into the various mesh terms or other terms. So it's actually looking for pregnancy or pregnancy in all terms. And it's looking for fibrin fragment D in supplementary concepts and fields or D-dimer. So it's looking at other things, not necessarily only what you typed. So if you typed in um, heart attack, it might put in myocardial infarction here or cardiac and other things like that, just so you know. So on this search, we got 269 results, which is a lot, but you can certainly get way more than that. So if you want to further limit your results, you can come here to this limits button and press that. And then you're brought to this page where you can see there are different kinds of limits you could put on your search. And so you could pick ones that are published in the last, let's say, five years. We don't want anything that's too old. And in here, under type of article, we can pick various different types. So you can see we could take clinical trials. Uh, maybe we don't want any letters to the editor, so we're going to keep those unclicked. Maybe a practice gu guideline, a randomized controlled trial, and a review. Maybe even a meta-analysis. We'll look at all of those. And if you can see here, there's other various different types that you could look at as well. Species, you could pick human. Subsets. Then over here, we also have the ability to change which languages we're going to look at. Let's go with English. Uh, since we're looking at pregnant people, I, I think it's kind of assumed we'd pick females, but we could do that. We could also limit the ages. And once we're done applying the limits, we can hit search. And now we've got our search, which which has pregnancy and D-dimer, and we've used these limits here. And now we've got it down to 14 articles, so that's obviously much more manageable. And so let's look at this first article. We can click on that. And you're given the journal name as well as the title of the article, the various authors, the abstract. Here you could see the mesh terms that are associated with this article. So these are the various ways you could search to get to this article, as well as the published publication type practice guideline. But remember, we form that clinical question in that with all those specific PICO terms so that we could now look at our abstracts and see if they 
match what we wanted and we were really looking at D dimer right as our intervention and this was more of radiology type stuff so that's not what we want so let's go down and see if we can find something that's more here's D dimer testing in laboratory practice again D dimer is there but we don't want laboratory practice we want it in pregnant females so you keep scrolling down and you say oh here's imaging evaluation of the pregnant patient with suspected pulmonary embolus again imaging that's not what we're going after but this one above it the diagnostic management of acute venous thromboembolism embolism during pregnancy uh, from 2011 for, from thrombosis uh, it's a review that might be what we're looking for let's click on that and so now looking at this abstract we here it says the adequate diagnostic management of suspected venous thromboembolism in pregnant women is of great importance blah 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 D-dimer testing is influenced by physiological changes and there have been studies suggesting raising the D-dimer level cutoff uh, suspected PE radiation exposure remains a concern hey so this does sound somewhat promising so now let's say we want to find this article and we know the name we know the author and we know that it's from this journal which is called thrombosis research so let's see if we can find that here we are on the rush university journals page and let's just type in here thrombosis research and see if we have it and here we see that we have the print catalog from 81 to 94 and we can probably click on this link to see if we can get that one so let's click on that and here we are on the science direct page of the thrombosis research journal and we remember that it was in the February uh, issue of 2011 so let's go down there I think it was in the supplement and then here we go and this is the February 2011 supplement so we'll click on that and now we're here in that supplement papers and abstracts from the for International Symposium on Women's Health Issues and Thrombosis and Hemostasis. Now let's see if we can find that article. And here it is. The Diagnostic Management of Acute Venous Thromboembolism in Pregnancy. Uh, so we can look at it here uh, by clicking on the PDF. And now we got the article. And so up to now we've learned how to ask a clinical question and how to use the PubMed in order to get uh, articles on it. Now from here on out we're gonna play like an almost choose your own adventure. I'm gonna teach you how to analyze these articles and you pick which one that you which video you need. In each one of those articles we're going to look at uh, the quality of the research that's here. We're gonna judge the validity of it. We're gonna actually look at the results and finally decide how can we really apply this to our own patient. Alright, see you later.